enablement is where you're able to do something you can't do in your own ability. It's when God puts His super upon your natural. Amen. Then He says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When I was reading that, now watch this now. When I was reading that, I was sitting there and I thought about this. He prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. I thought, well, that would be good. I would like to just rub it in some people's faces. <laughs> then I realized that's not the way the Lord is. Love endures all things. Love believes all things. Come on now. Yeah. When you sit at a table, there's two what? Two sides to the table. God does not prepare a table in the presence of your enemy so you can gloat in front of them. He prepares a table in the presence of your enemy so you can minister to them. People really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Between the amen and there it is, you already know how to get out of your problem as a believer. But in the hardest times of your life, the reason that most people that you need to reach in your life are not receptive to you, they can't relate to you because you're living in a different area or level than they are, whether they're rich or poor or whether you're rich or poor. I'm talking spiritually. But when you're going through a hard time of your life, whether it's physically, financially, emotionally, whatever it may be, spiritually, and you're going through that valley of the shadow of death, God says, all right, you already know what you need to do. You need to count it all joy. But he, he says this. Watch this now. He says, I want you to remember that you are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hid. Neither do put men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and to give a light to all in the house. Verse 16. We all know this. Watch this. Let your, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, that means deeds, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus said this, when I'm lifted up, when I'm lifted up, I will do what? Draw all men into who? Himself. Now watch this. I want to show you something really interesting here, and I'm going to close. In the hardest times of your life, I know how to get out of those situations now, to where Jesus has become the author and the finisher of my faith. But he says, during the hardest times of your life is when I want you to become the most effective witness. He says, to help you, I'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. He says, but I want you to let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. He said, it's not you that liveth, but Christ in you, the hope of glory. Then I studied this out about the candle. Listen to this. A candle in Jesus' day was actually a lamp. There was no such thing as candles. They were called lamps. And it said this, quote, a clay lamp that fit in the palm of one's hand. They said that this lamp was so made of so inexpensive material that it had little or no worth in itself until, somebody say until, until, until oil was poured inside of it. What gave value to the lamp was what it contained. It was the oil. The oil was what was valuable. The lamp itself could not provide light at all. Its ability was totally dependent upon the oil. You and I, according to 2 Corinthians 4, 7, carry the precious oil of the Holy Spirit in our earthen vessels. You hear me? These lamps in Jesus' day that gave out light, once the wicks were immersed in oil and lit, the lamps would burn continually as long as there was a supply of oil. What's, what's the oil talking about? Being full of joy. Rejoicing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This tells us if you and I, according to Ephesians 5.18, stay filled with the Holy Spirit, you and I will never lose our fire and allow our lights to grow dim in our walk with God. It says, keep letting your light shine before men so you can influence them to glorify God. It said, but don't just put your lamp in the corner. Because if you do, only those in the corner will be able to see it. Don't just put it on the table. Only those at the table will see it. He says, the same lamp that was placed on top of a lamp stand, it would give the maximum amount of light and would give light to all that were in the room. 
The amount of light was the provided was determined by its position. The higher the light, the brighter the light. He said here, don't allow your light and the lights of others to be smothered. In other words, don't allow the devil to put a bushel over your light, talents, gifts, abilities, and influences. Amen? Because when you come out of there, they're going to follow you. People who have been shipwrecked in their faith, that have cast away their confidence, who have given up hope, when you when you go in there and you're rejoicing, you're, not, you're going to lift your lamp up. Jesus said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw. I will draw all men to myself. You go out here at night and put one of those big lights up, you're going to have so many bugs. Are you all here what I'm saying? Now watch this. He says, when you do, you're going to have people that will follow you out. Not just that you're going to come out of your situation, you're going to bring people that were in there for a long time out. You may never know it until you get to heaven. But that's the moment you go from learning to witness to becoming a witness. Listen, you and I are not the ones that are supposed to come and get people saved. One waters, one plants, but God gives the increase. We can lead people to the Lord, but we're not the Savior. Now, I'm going to finish with this verse right here so you all won't have to eat left Y'all think I'm, I'm teasing. I'm serious. They don't put out food to them. Y'all, I'm going to go at 1 30. I'm going to eat one plate at 1 30, one at 2. I'm going to <laughs> James 5, 7, and 8. We're going to close with this. Be patient, therefore, brethren. You know what the next six word says? Unto the coming of the Lord. How long are you and I supposed to be patient? Unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, God, or the husband, waited for the precious fruit of the earth. He has long patience for it until he's received the early and the latter rain. Aren't you glad God had enough patience for you to get born again? Yes. Look at verse 8. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth not. Two verses, two times he referenced coming of the Lord. Now watch this, it doesn't amplify. I want to finish with this. So you must, you also must be patient. Establish your hearts, strengthen and confirm them in the final certainty. For the coming of the Lord is very near. Near. I don't know about you, when the Lord comes back, I'm going to have my hand to the plow. I mean, I won't be looking into Jesus, the honor and finish of my faith, but I'm going to be out in the field. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the fields are wide as snow, but the laborers are few. You say, well, you know what? I, I, I would rather do this and this and this. Listen, you can give $50 to Vacation Bible School, and that's great. But some of these kids on Vacation Bible School, this is what I learned growing up. They, they, need, they need to have a figure in there five days a week. Five straight days or whatever because they don't have an uncle, they don't have a dad, they don't have a grandfather. They need a male figure at least for five days in their life that week. So bring your $50, bring yourself, and be a difference in the kid's life. You want me to tell you why? Because it helped me. I can still remember vacation Bible school having some stability in my life for five days. Same with women. Some of them, you need, they need a grandmother. They need a mom or they need somebody, an aunt. These little girls need somebody. Now, I'm not saying that because I don't know if you have vacation Bible school. But all I'm saying is this. God just don't want you to be to bring stuff. He wants you to bring yourself. When you show up, show up yourself. Amen? I'll say it again. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. But in the hardest times of your life, you already know how to get out of it. But let your light shine. And when you do, you're going to be amazed when you get to heaven how many people came out and followed you out of that darkness because light exposes darkness. And the definition of darkness is the absence of light. I don't know about you, but I'm just letting my light shine. People, people talk about... Listen, people are going to talk about you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're, you're, Whatever they do, they're going to talk about you. You might as well just do it and have fun. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Like my spiritual mentor said, he said, if they run you out of town, just get out in the front and make it look like a parade. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to have fun. Amen? 
There's going to be people, you know, some people reject, some people accept. Amen. I'm going to, I, listen, I'm not going to go through life. I'm going to enjoy the journey. People are going to talk about you whether you do it or not. You might as well do it and have fun. Just have fun. Amen. I've had people come up to me and say stuff like, you know, you're getting fat. I said, well, you're ugly, but I can lose weight. Amen. I don't, I don't argue with them. I had one guy a while back said, you're getting gray. And you turn gray. That's what he said. I said, you turn loose. He was bald. I said, you turn loose. How many knows you can have fun in life? Amen. Yeah. Don't wait till you get the kids out of the house. Don't wait till you get the house paid off. Don't wait till you get a new car. Wait till you get a new job. Wait till you get a raise. Today is the day to rejoice and be glad. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Just... My Lord, I mean, just start laughing. Somebody else might just join in anyway. I don't know what you're laughing about, but I need to do this. Oh. You just start rejoicing. Amen? I mean, when I was in college, we did ignorant stuff. <laughs> One day, so help me, this happened. I gotta t Can I tell a story on myself? We, we were in college. I said, hey, I told a friend of mine, I said, well, let's just do this and see what everybody else does. He goes, what do you want to do? I said, let's just look up in the air and point. Now we're in college. We're sitting there, uh huh, yeah, uh huh, yeah, right there, yeah, uh huh. So we're looking around, watching people up here walking around, going like, yeah. I got to tell on myself. Another guy across the parking lot went like that, and I go, "What you looking at?" I thought actually there was something up there that I didn't see, and I was just pointing anyway. So when he pointed, I went, "What's he looking at?" <laughs> Come on. I mean, if you get on fire for God, people will just come watch you burn. Amen. Amen. You just got to have fun in life. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. I will choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. So through faith and patience, we're going to what? Inherit the promises. Amen. Amen. Everybody got? Anybody get anything out of this? Yes. Amen. Anybody need prayer for healing or anything? Praise God. We prayed for about 100 some people last week. Man, God was just healing people left and right. Why? He has no favorite children. He says, if you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Right. Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody need to be saved besides you? You all right? <laughs> you know, if the Lord comes right now, it was good knowing you. All right? No, I'm just <laughs> You sure you don't want to get prayer for? Okay. All right. I'm not forcing you. Listen, one thing I don't do is force. But I always give the opportunity. Amen? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? You need prayer for something? Come on down here right now. I remember when I worked in Tulsa, I hired a girl from Sterling, Illinois. And I used to say Sterling, Illinois. <laughs> Illinois, Illinois. Is she